Welcome to the Exam Room Podcast brought to you by the Physicians Committee. Hi, I am the weight loss champion, Chuck Carroll. Today we're talking about universal meals. You know how sometimes you just get with a group of people and one person can't eat this or another person can't eat that because of allergens? Well, today we're going to be meeting with the vegan roadie, Dustin Harder who has been creating what we call universal meals that everybody can enjoy. Why? Because they are free of the top allergens that cause problems for so many people. So I'm so excited that he is here. My, oh my, has he been busy in the kitchen? And that's where we find him today. Dustin, thanks for being here, my man. Thanks for having me, Chuck. It's good to see you. The pleasure is all mine, man. And universal meals is the perfect name for this project. Before we get into that, what are the top allergens when it comes to food? Yeah, so the top nine allergens, we have milk, eggs, peanuts, tree nuts, fish, uh, crustacean fish, uh, shellfish, wheat, soy, and also sesame has just been added. So that takes us to the top nine. Okay, well, that's the top nine. I would venture to say that those top nine, at least one of them, are probably in 99.9% .9 of the recipes yeah. out there. So you're really kind of filling a, a niche here, man. Sure, yeah, especially soy. Soy pops up everywhere, and some people have soy sensitivities. So it's something we've been looking at as well. How how difficult was it for you to create these recipes? Uh, this, I mean, being being a chef, right, I would imagine this has been the ultimate challenge. Well, it's that interesting thing. Chefs are always like, oh, no special requests and things like that. And when I started working with PCRM, I sort of latched onto this program because it excited me. The challenge of it excited me. Once upon a time when I went vegan, being vegan excited me and coming up with ways to create uh, my favorite foods and veganize them was exciting. Now it was sort of exciting to say, okay, we're going to make some delicious items that appeal to everyone, but can also create space for everyone at the table. So I got excited about it. Never stand down from a challenge, man. Never stand down <laughs> from a challenge. That's I was surprised I got excited, if I'm being honest. I really thought I was going to walk the, like, look the other way and be like, we have a few and that's fine. But instead, I sort of like latched onto it. Well, look, I mean, here's here's what is most impressive to me is that you've been able to really build out this index of recipes in a very short amount of time. I mean, when you took over, how many recipes were there in, in the Universal Meals program already? We had about 35 on the website. So we had about 35 and then we also had about 25. So we take those smaller ones and then we have a scaled up portion of them as well for institutions to use, hospitals, universities, prisons. So they have a scaled up version they can use as well. And how many do you have today? We have over 100 now. There you go. So you have yeah. been busy. I want to go ahead and pull up the uh, the website. Um, if you're listening to the podcast, go ahead and uh, hop on universalmeals.org. You can find the website there that has all of the recipes. But I want to just kind of walk people through this right now. You, you see this right here, right up at the top. Tells you about the program. And then, I mean, we're just going to cut right to it, right? Recipes. That's where everybody wants to go. <laughs> so you go here. And you see some of the top ones that you've laid out so magnificently. What I mean, I'm looking at this and I'm I'm thinking to myself, well, these are like really, you know, uh, going to be palate pleasers. You you got a little bit of everything. You've got Thai food at the top. I see you've got uh, Mexican food there. You've got you know some desserts there. You've got really a little bit of everything. Southwestern. You've got a little bit of everything for everybody in here, and. When I say for everybody, because it's a universal meal, it really is for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. That was sort of, that's the goal behind this. It's a cool program that Dr. Barnard created a couple of years ago, actually. And the idea was to help institutions serve anyone, regardless of uh, cultural backgrounds or religious practices. But then we go to dietary restrictions or parameters that anyone's under or just diets that they're trying to follow, whether it's eliminating soy, you know, that's a big one. Some people don't want to eat a lot of soy uh, or they have to do it for health reasons, right? So it really is making a place for everyone at the table. It's not just about the allergies, but it might be some sort of personal decision somebody is making as well. And now, instead of ordering food or asking you know, a server or being somewhere and saying, it has to be this or that, can you eliminate this or do that? You can just look at something if it's a universal meal and know that it sort of has you covered. So the goal is to start getting this out there to places, home cooks, but as well, you know, places as well, institutions and even restaurants eventually, we hope. 
How much interest has there been with institutions, uh, you know, higher education? I know that you've already been working with at least one university on this, right? Sure. Yeah, we we uh, Miami University has been at the forefront of it, sort of leading the way, and they they present a lot of recipes on their menus. But uh, we've worked with Notre Dame as well. We've had some great success at Notre Dame. We're actually doing an event at Dartmouth on May 11th, and they're doing an entire Universal Meals takeover. So. It sort of depends on the teams there and the chefs and who's excited, but like the chef at Dartmouth has created a bunch of his own universal meals recipes that he's showcasing that day. And I'm gonna be there doing some of our recipes. We've got a Brussels and black beans taco with butternut queso and sunflower sour cream on there that I'm gonna be serving up that day. So um, the interest is big, but it all comes down to what is serviceable, right? What What is easy for institutions to sort of put together? There's always the question of staffing at institutions and how we train the staffs and how we approach it is a big portion of that as well. And that also brings cost into the equation. And yeah. so now I'm thinking, okay, so we're, we're making a very specific type of menu. Does that really escalate the cost to produce this type of food? Interesting to bring that up because one of the fun things in this, Dr. Barnard also had this this thought of thrifty uh, thrifty menu items. So what thrifty means is everything that's a thrifty menu item is a dollar or less per serving. And we've noticed when we talk to institutions, we can talk about how delicious the food is and how much everyone's gonna like it and how how universal it actually is. But the minute we say, oh, we've got these recipes that are a dollar or less per serving, their eyes just light up because everyone's trying to save money in the long run. And again, from institutions to the home cook, everybody loves that. So now we had six thrifty recipes on the Universal Meals website. Now we have over 50 uh, thrifty recipes on there and we've marked them clearly with a thrifty sticker. So you can see, a and that one you pulled up, that crispy smashed potato is a thrifty recipe. So there's a little yellow sticker on there. But aside from the yellow sticker with the recipes all through the website, there is one thrifty section then where we've compiled all of the thrifty recipes so people can go sort of choose from there and know that they're getting something for a dollar or less per serving. And and here is that that recipe here, crispy smashed potatoes with sunflower dill cream. So it's not like you're basically saying, hey, go buy a potato, bake it, eat it plain. There's your thrifty meal. Like this is some seriously gourmet deliciousness, man. Well, it's super easy. This is just boiling some potatoes, smashing them, and then putting them in the broiler to sort of crisp up. And then this uh, cream that's over the top of it is, I think, four ingredients. It's raw sunflower seeds, a little bit of lemon, dill, water, and maybe a pinch of salt. And it's super tasty, full of flavors, fresh because of that dill. So it, it comes off really nice, but it's really simple to pull together. Simplicity, I love. And I'm looking at the ingredients because, I mean, they are they are simplistic. I mean, these are things that most everybody already has in their kitchen, you know, from the, the little drizzle of olive oil, which is optional, uh, optional, sea salt, pepper. I mean, who doesn't have salt and pepper in their kitchen? And then you're saying that the, the dill dressing is also just what, four ingredients. So really, yeah. all you need to do is go out and get these little baby potatoes and a little bit of dill and you're in business, man. Yeah. Yeah, true. And for every, every people out there who are oil free, you did mention oil, all of the most, I would say probably 90% of these recipes offer the oil free option. And we give the nutritional values for with the oil and without the oil. So people can choose their own path when they're going down that road. Uh, if they want oil, they can have it. If they don't want oil, they can take it out. Uh, and we offer all the swaps for that and everything. So there really are variations here for people to sort of choose their own journey. Yeah, that's great. And I just highlighted there on the screen, the oil free. I mean, you kind of give the uh, the swap there instead of oil. So in this case, just boil them a couple of extra minutes to get uh, get them, broil them, I should say, not boil. It was, you yeah, can't broil, broil and make end, something yeah. crispy, <laughs> uh, but broil them to make them a little bit crispier and, and you're in business. So I love the fact that uh, you make it so easy for everybody. Dag, oh man, that just looks amazing to me. They're so uh, good, really. Make those this week. They're so good. I love them. They're one of my favorites. Oh, it's it's got to happen. It's got to happen. <laughs> I mean, it just it needs to at this point. Um, I guess my question, though, if this is a college or university or even a hospital who's looking at this, I mean, I, I'm not really overly familiar with how kitchens and cafeterias work in places like that. Given these recipes are so simple, would you say that they can be prepared with the staff that they already have in place or would this require additional hands on deck? 
that's exactly what I tried to do in creating these is make them as streamlined as possible. Um, and also with ingredients that people know already and that are easily ordered within their food service system already. So that was a huge goal of this. We talked to hospitals and universities and sort of design these recipes based on those conversations. We compiled hospital menus to see items that they already had that were not plant-based and made those. There's a uh, universal not so meaty loaf that we have on the uh, website that is like one of my favorites. And I'm not even a big meatloaf fan, but it took me like three months to get this right because it was suddenly not just a vegan meatloaf, but a meatloaf without the top nine allergens. So I really had to like go through, through some different variations, but we had to look at what was popular and that meatloaf popped up on all the hospital menus and for universities, it's pizzas, it's mac and cheese. So there's a couple different, uh, there's a deluxe shells and cheese where the sauce is made of cauliflower and carrots and potatoes. And there's a few different cheese sauce variations. You can make one with butternut squash. Um, and there's one, just one pot made with nutritional yeast and some plant-based milk. So different variations on cheese sauces, they can make, mix that with any pasta, of course. Uh, there's some new flatbread options like a hummus and roasted, uh, vegetable flatbread or a spinach and artichoke flatbread that I love. And that just comes down to really easy to prepare those top ingredients, right? Roasting the vegetables and you can use a pre-prepared hummus or make your own, but then you just have to have the right crust to follow those parameters. And maybe that's, Maybe that's not the goal, right? Maybe this hospital has, or this uh, university has a vegan crust that's not gluten-free. They can still use that recipe on top of that. It, it's not following the gluten-free aspect, but it's still hitting some other points, right? For sure, for sure, man. I, I'm I'm just blown away by this. Do you think that now that you've kind of been doing this for a few months and you've maybe you've kind of hit hit your stride, you found your rhythm a little bit, and these recipes are are a little bit easier for you to to create now? Yeah, absolutely. At first, like I said, it was exciting, but it was also a challenge. And now when I think of it, I'm like, oh, we can do X, Y, Z, swap this out and do that. I learned that sunflower seeds are magic, just like cashews are magic. Sunflower seeds became my new cashew in this, uh, making sauces and creams and stuff like that. There is a difference in like cashews emulsify a little better. They you don't get the water content doesn't separate when it sets uh, necessarily overnight. So if you do make like that sunflower dressing, for example, if you have extra and you set it in the fridge for a few days, you're just gonna have to shake it up before you use it the next time. But that's really like the only difference I found in the two. Um, you're still able to use sunflower seeds sort of as a palette and to create that luscious creamy texture that you're looking for. So it's great. Same kind of deal. You get them raw, you soak them, and then you do whatever you're gonna do with them. Yeah, yeah. Good deals. I, I guess like, you know, they sell the the prepackaged sunflower seeds that have already been roasted and salted. You probably can't do much with them once they're at that stage already, right? I mean, you can still use them. You're going to get a little extra roasted flavor there and some salt. So you'll cut whatever salt out of the recipe, but it's best to get the purest form that you can, of course, because that's going to leave you with that blank canvas to put flavors on top of. Just like with raw cashews, right? We're always getting the unsalted, unroasted version. Um, I found that Sprouts is a great place for those whole foods. And lots of grocery stores have you just have to find their like you want to get out of the junk food aisle where there's all the salted foods you want to get to sort of the healthy aisle where they've got the raw nuts and everything like that usually they've got the unsalted uh raw uh, sunflower seeds in there as well just a couple more here for you uh i want to go back to the hospital end of things you mm -hmm. know having been a patient in the past in the hospital and looking at the menu it, it's kind of horrifying um, now that I know yes. a little bit more about nutrition, about what's being served. So as you're speaking to the hospitals and, and, you know, not, not just the executives there, but the doctors, right? I mean, do you find that in addition to presenting a pretty cool program that you're kind of turning that light switch on for them as well saying, well, Hey, you know, if somebody's in here because they're sick, we probably shouldn't be giving them a burger and fries and a Coke, right? Absolutely. It's it's interesting as the years progress, the light bulbs are turning on more and more with more people. So it's wonderful to see. I was in a meeting a couple of weeks ago with a hospital and finally somebody on their team just said, well, it's the right thing to do. And I was just like, you're right. It is the right thing to do. But I'm glad you came to that conclusion and you're able to see that, you know, because I want to step into every meeting and just say, hey, this is the right thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> but instead, I kind of present what we have and hope that they start to see, oh, this seems like the right thing to do. And they did that. And I think that's happening more and more. We, we always meet resistance. There's still resistance. We're always meeting that. But 
I find more and more people are more open to it. And I would imagine, though, uh, the the kids on campus who you're interacting with, and I assume that when you're on these tours, you're giving out samples because, I mean, what, what's a food talk without a sample, right? Sure, sure. So, so as you're handing this out and you're explaining the program to the students there, I would imagine the majority of them are all in for this, completely on board. Yeah, it's cool. Students, uh, first of all, students love stickers. Who knew? We take a pile of, <laughs> they were coming up to our table just going, well, but do you have any stickers? We're like, we have this cool brochure and here's some recipes. They're like, yeah, but what about stickers? Um, that's like just college, a side. College but... age kids, yeah, right? Yeah, Asking yeah, yeah. For... But it's wow. cool because you get the stickers and then they put it on their backpack or whatever. And it says, you know, plants only. Or, and it, it's a great way to spread the message. Bro, scratch and sniff. If there was ever yeah. a place where a scratch and sniff <laughs> sticker would be appropriate, <laughs> this is it. Oh, that's funny. Delicious. <laughs> Delicious and funny. Um, but yeah, their reaction's really great, especially when, you know, universal universal meals sometimes it's it doesn't have the wider appeal because not everyone has allergies. But when you explain it to them, they start to think, oh, well, my best friend actually is allergic to this, or oh, you know, so and so practices this religion. It's been difficult when I'm about to eat with it. And they start their wheels start turning and they say, Oh, we can all eat together. But I have had students who come up to our table and we give them a sample of something and we say, oh, there's two other things on the menu that in the cafeteria today. And I watch them just like, they're not used to having that option where they don't have to think about it. They're suddenly able to go into the cafeteria and there's options when they've got, you know, two or three allergies and they're able to just have something on the menu that day. They're very excited about it. No doubt. No doubt. So uh, what what else do you have coming up as as we kind of conclude this here interview? Because I want to go and I want to look at these hundred recipes plus that are now up on the website, man. I'm I'm stoked for this. So what's what's next for Universal Meals? Yeah, well, I'll tell you, I'm going to tell you a couple of my other favorite recipes. There's the better than takeout uh, sweet and sour cauliflower, which I love. It's all done in a pan. Uh, there's a one pot stroganoff that I uh, mushroom stroganoff that I absolutely adore. And there's also a eat your veggies bolognese. That is so tasty. You know, people usually go with the lentil bolognese. This one is a mixture of vegetables to create that texture and that delicious hearty bite. So, so good. So just a few other ones to throw out there. But what's coming up for Universal Meals? We're working on a Universal Meals University tour uh, in the fall. So October is Vegetarian Awareness Month and November is Vegan Awareness Month. So we're getting some dates on the calendar. Hopefully do some morning TV shows when we're in the, those areas with those universities. And then do some uh, pop-ups in cafeterias and feed students and feed the staff and educate the staff so they can get excited about it as well. Yeah, you got me excited, man. You got me excited in 17 minutes and 45 seconds. And now hey! it's lunchtime, my friend. <laughs> All right. So uh, universalmeals.org is the website to go to for all of these amazing, delicious recipes. And if you are uh, somebody who can get in the ear of a university or a hospital, what's the best way to contact you to get the ball rolling there? Gosh, I think we have a general nutrition email address, but I'm just going to give mine. My name's Dustin Harder, so it's dharder at pcrm.org. You can reach out to me there. And if you have a university or a hospital or anyone you think might be interested in these items, by all means, reach out to me and I'll reach out or we'll get the appropriate person to reach out. Or if we have a contact there, maybe we already have a contact at a place you have in mind. Uh, we'll get the ball rolling with them and see where we can take universal meals with them. And I want to stress too that we are trying, of course, to get this in institutions, but I think it's very important that people understand that the recipes currently up there, those hundred recipes, they're available for the home cook. And we want you to have these at home. We want you to be able to make them for your friends and family. I know that it's very stressful when you're planning a brunch with you know six or eight people and you've got that one person who's got an allergy. There's things on here where you can make a couple items and everyone can eat it. It's all inclusive. And it's, it's a, it's, it creates a great dining experience for everyone. It takes the stress off of you of planning as well. So <laughs> these recipes are for the home cook just as much as they are for the institution. All right. Now I'm going to put the better than takeout sweet and sour cauliflower up on the screen before we uh, wrap up here today. Yeah. Uh, this looks incredible. Um, I mean, it really does. It looks like something that you would just go right to your local Chinese restaurant and order. But here is a much, much, much healthier version of it. Uh, how long does it take to put this thing together here? Gosh, that one less than a half hour. Everything's in one pan. Wow. 
Yeah, wow. everything's in one pan. You're not frying anything. You know, normally with sweet and sour, you're going to have fried pieces of this and that. But you're not missing the fried with this because all the vegetables, the flavor comes through. You're not blocking it with any of that fried oily business. There's a little bit of oil in this if you want it to saute your vegetables, but it's not necessary. And then the sauce comes together. Normally, it's like a heavy sugary laden sauce. This one we use pineapple juice, one of the sweeter and more sugary of the fruits. But instead of using sugar, we're using some pineapple juice. So we still get that sweet and sour taste in there. And I just want to highlight this. So the this is the oil-free nutritional info here. You're talking about 103 calories per serving and just one gram of fat. So you think about that, and then you think about how different that nutritional uh, menu would, would be if you ordered it uh, from a Chinese restaurant. I mean, you are talking about <laughs> a significant cost savings and a significant savings with your health as well. This is just fantastic. A plus work, Dustin. A Thank plus, you so brother. much. Thank you. I never even thought about that. Listeners, if you're not watching this, I just covered my face when he compared the new, when you brought up the comparison of the nutrition uh, profile, I was like, oh my gosh, in a restaurant, it would just be like, leaps and bounds to a different world with those nutritional numbers. No question. Astronomical. I would say at least by a multiple of four. And that's yeah, with the least. oil recipe that you have here, which is that little bit. I would say at least a multiple of four here. At Just least. unbelievable, man. Healthy, delicious, good for literally everybody. Yep. Dustin Harder, man. Uh, thank you so very much for all of your phenomenal work and, and keep it up, my friend. Thank you so much. So great to be here today, Chuck. Good to see you. If your health IQ is a couple of points higher than it was a few minutes ago, go ahead and like this video or subscribe to the YouTube channel. And to take it even higher, head over to Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your favorite shows. Look for the exam room by the Physicians Committee. Hit the subscribe button there as well and help to make your world a healthier place.